up everybody, P Doc here. Do you work or study at home wondering about a desk setup that can make you more productive and feel like you are the shit? Today I want to show you my dream desk setup as a business professional by day and a content creator by night. So you can hopefully draw some inspiration for your own desk setup. I also include a bonus trick on how to override some MacBook's limits to only one external monitor. Let's start with the obvious. This is an extra large standing desk from Autonomous. To me, the most important feature on any standing desk is the memory buttons. You don't want your fingers to be abducted by those up and down buttons every time you switch positions. This friction prevents people from exploiting the full potential of a standing desk. This is a 34 inch 21 by 9 ultra wide curved monitor from LG. I was debating really hard when buying my first monitor. It comes with a hefty price tag and you're just gonna be looking at the same thing. No you're not. A large ultra wide screen gives you so much more screen estate that can display multiple apps simultaneously, saving you the time spent on switching back and forth. Once I made the upgrade to the big monitor, I knew I could never go back to my 13 inch laptop screen. I'm personally on the fence about this monitor. Yes, it's got its virtues, but two things really got under my skin. One, it's got this dictionary sized power adapter, which is a huge, literally, problem to an already cramped desk space. Two, the number of ports in the back of this monitor is very limited. There's only two USB-A ports on the back. From what I heard, those two drawbacks are pretty common across LG's entire lineup. On top of the ultra wide is a 4K HDR 27 inch monitor from BenQ. I edit most of my videos in 4K because it's a whole nother level of crispiness compared to 1080p. I watch movies, NBA games, and other sports videos on this one. Being able to see so much detail gives me that immersive watching experience. Within your budget, I would definitely recommend 4K over any other feature that you're considering. In terms of color, this monitor just blew me away. It covers 100% sRGB and 95% P3. In English, the color performance covers most videos on the internet and is HDR ready. I bailed on LG this time because of the chunky power adapter. I don't have any more space under my desk to hide another brick. Luckily, this one has it built in and it's got a lot of ports on the back. Maybe for those reasons, the shell is on the thicker end of the spectrum. Holding these two monitors together is the Ergotron LX dual stacking arm. It came in in a very sleek package. To my pleasant surprise, it was incredibly easy to assemble. I like the floaty look of my devices and it creates precious space for me to tuck away other gadgets. When you look for a monitor arm, be sure to check how strong the base is. Some products may claim a smaller footprint with a smaller base, but that's the last thing you want because it may lead to a wobbly setup that could collapse and damage your expensive electronics. Besides the strong base, flexible monitor arms that let you adjust single-handedly without tilting afterwards are crucial to the experience as well. Previously, I had another month Every time I tried to make adjustment, it went like this. And if I tighten it, yes, the chin dropping may be gone, but it would take a super cyan to move the monitor even by a TED. Moving on to the peripherals, I have a Logitech MX Master 3S. It's not the greatest mouse ever. I would have been using my Apple trackpad had it not been impossible to stay inbound on the trackpad with such large screens. The gesture button on this thing is awkwardly placed. The horizontal scrolling wheel is not integrated into the vertical one. I could go on, but I think it does the job and is still more capable than most of its peers. This is a Dell business keyboard. I took it from an office. Yes, it's wired and I hate that. I've tried so many fancy wireless keyboards on the market, yet I'm sticking with this dinosaur. I like how it's got a few extra keys. For example, the zoom keys are clutch for someone who feeds on Excel spreadsheets at work. The volume wheel is very distinct and impossible to miss. I also love how far down the keys can travel when I type, which makes unintended keystrokes less likely. I also got this Logitech MX keyboard from my company. I hate how little the keys travel when I press them. 
and the keys are kind of clustered together. Let me know if you guys know a wireless keyboard that's got a distinct volume button, solid travel, and hopefully an ergonomic layout. Last but not least, we know that MacBook Air doesn't support a second external monitor. So here's a trick to get around that. Display Link docking stations. You can go on Display Link's website to find products that have this technology built in. Then install the Display Link Manager driver on your Mac. The one that I'm using is from Targus. This way I have a one cable solution to switch between work and personal laptops. All right, there's a lot more I wanted to talk about, but I had to cut those out to keep this desk tour short and sweet. Um, so if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. I could make future videos based on your feedback. Thanks for watching T-Dog. I'll see you in the next one.